Laser sights increase confidence regardless of experience level, whether you're learning the fundamentals or overcoming aging eyes. Crimson Trace, making laser sights standard equipment. Visit crimsontrace.com to find a dealer near you. Today, broadcasting from the Crimson Trace booth at the 2017 SHOT Show, it's Tom Gresham's Gun Talk. Here's Tom. All right, welcome to Gun Talk. I'm Tom Gresham, and it, uh, yeah, we're at the SHOT Show, 2017 SHOT Show in Las Vegas, Nevada. There's so much here, we had to do two shows on it. Uh, we're in the Crimson Trace booth, where we love to hang out. It's a cool booth. There are a lot of people around here. You guys got a lot of cool things here, Lane. Thank you. Uh, visited by uh, Lane Tobiason, the president of Crimson Trace, and... You guys just keep getting awards and doing cool stuff. I mean, innovation really is kind of the name of the game for Crimson Trace, isn't it? You know, it really is. It's one of the three parts of our, of our growth strategy, you know, innovation and then growing the laser market and, and having really good operational excellence to support it. But innovation is what built the company. You know, our founder, Lou Danielson, is a, an Oregon State University engineer, Hall of Fame engineer uh, there, and really started off with a vision to create great products that people want, and uh, we've just been doing it for over 20 years. Okay, so i got to ask you, you know, we were... What is this, our second, third day here, isn't it? I don't even know where I am anymore. It's a you know, shot show. Got the crowds coming down there. Uh, we are, um, question for you. You got people walking around here. What's the mood? What are you hearing? You know, the mood is good. I mean, we've got, it's always good at, at the trade show here. And, and this year, especially with, uh, you know, economy doing well and a lot of new products coming out. You know, we had an election event that turned out the way the industry very much wanted, which is a good thing. So, you know, we're optimistic for the year. I think it's going to be another good one. People are walking down the aisles smiling. I mean, we know, you know, as we're sitting here today, you know, this is recorded. As we're sitting here today, tomorrow we have the inauguration. And there were people who said, well, boy, you know, gun sales are just going to go down if, if Trump gets elected. I'm not seeing that. I'm not hearing that anywhere. What do you hear? You know, so I, I think it's too early to tell. I mean, you know, I'm always the... the uh, You're cautious. The cautious. I, I know. You know, can't, can't get out over our skis. Uh, <laughs> As they say, but you know we're we're optimistic. I, I think uh, in past election cycles we've certainly had some upticks in in demand, consumer activity, some of it based on potential threats. Well, that's good in the short term. It's not as good long term. Um, what this will probably do, we hope, is normalize things a little bit. And then what I think is going to happen is the fundamentals are going to matter more than ever. Meaning innovation, mm-hmm. good products coming out. Uh, supported by great customer service, delivered to the, the consumer in, in the right way with the right marketing. That's always going to win long term, and that's one of the things that Crimson Trace uh, prides itself in doing well. Basically, make good stuff and take care of people. That's right. How's that for a slogan? It's a simple formula. <laughs> <laughs> Just make right. good stuff and take care of your people, you know? And, and, you know, of course, I mean, you guys are doing that. Oh, I. I I think I told and maybe I didn't tell you. I just got a text from uh, a friend of mine who says, hey, they just they brought out uh, a laser for my PPKS. I mean, you guys are forever bringing out new models. You know, we'll do 15 to 20 new products a year, yeah. and we don't wait till SHOT Show or NRA Show or, you know, the kind of highlights. We, we try to make the best ones available during those parts of the year, but we're always coming out with new stuff. We have a great engineering team uh, and a great product development team that's always looking out in the future. The other thing that we do is we follow the gun manufacturers. So when there's a new handgun that mm-hmm. comes out, for example, a Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0 has just come out. We're fast at work on a new laser system for that. So that, that feeds us, sure. um, helps us. And then we're also coming up with brand new things. We have a, an AR-15 or MSR platform system called the Link. Oh, yeah. Which we, is, we, yeah, yeah, that's... That's, that, that's witchcraft is what that is. Well, you know, we're uh, <laughs> glad to hear you say that. Man, it's, I mean, it's like you look at that and go, holy smoke. I mean, what you got is a, a grip-activated uh, light laser system, but the unit, it doesn't have any wires connected to it. you got a unit out on the a forearm, and you can turn on you know, the laser and the light, you know, or both. But it's wireless, but it's not Bluetooth. And it won't open your garage door. Correct. <laughs> no, it's it's a great system. We've been working on it for years. I mean, yeah. I won't tell, I won't say how many years, but it's over five. Wow. And it's you know, Crimson Trace does does one thing really, really well, which is we take available technology, whether it's lasers or wireless communication, or other systems, batteries, right. you know, miniaturization of batteries, and we integrate them into our products in the way the consumer wants it. So we're not always the one to develop the technology, but, boy, when it's done, we're going to be the first to grab it and integrate it. That link system, as you say, it's a light laser combination that when you grip 
just like the rest of our products, you grip the ha the uh, handle, mm -hmm. you know, the, the grip, ready to fire, automatically turns on the light laser. Yeah, you don't have to flip a switch or anything. Just grab no. it and turns it on. Nope. And there are things in the pipeline for that. You know, other things, cameras, for example, other things like that. Really? Yeah, that, that system can do. Cool. All right. One of the questions that I'm hearing, I know you guys are getting it all the time, what happens... Uh, Crimson Trace was purchased, and then, of course, you had the whole confusing between, well, did Smith & Wesson go out of business? No, of course not. Smith & Wesson did not. Explain what happened here. What's sure. the structure? You know, so it's, it's, I'll start those sort of at the top where, so Smith & Wesson Firearms, right. no change. Just the holding company, which is what, you know, stock is, is built around, that the actual uh, stock is issued from. Right. Smith & Wesson Holding Corporation changed its name to American Outdoor Brands Corporation. Because they own more than Smith & Wesson Firearms. That's exactly right. And that's the reason. So they have Smith & Wesson Firearms. They have Cr Crimson Trace and the Electro Optics Division. Mm -hmm. We have an Accessories Division, which is uh, Battenfeld Technologies okay. is primarily there. And then we just kicked off an Outdoor Products Division. That's alongside those as well. That uh, is going to be built around camping, fishing, hiking. Okay, so the holding company now has a name that is actually more appropriate to what it does. Correct. So, okay. Correct. Yeah. So no change as far as that goes. And then as far as Crimson Trace, we were purchased in August uh, mm -hmm. by, by then Smith & Wesson Holding Corporation. They were our biggest customer. The firearms division was. Right. Uh, so great familiarity. We knew them. They knew us. Um, and it was just really a great fit. I mean, we're going forward. Still as we were as Crimson Trace, you know, I'm here, the team is here, the facility is here. Right. Um, and it's just really a good fit uh, for us. It's fabulous. So when people want to keep up with what's going on at Crimson Trace, is the website still the best place? You bet. Website's the best place to see it. We also are uh, very active on Facebook, so definitely okay. check that out if, if you're a Facebook person. Uh, but, yeah, the website's got the latest information. And then if you're curious, give us a call as well. Really? We have a full, full staff of customer service people. We'll always answer the phone during our business hours and, and talk to customers. Fabulous. So, CrimsonTrace.com. Yep. Easy as that. Lane Tobias, and thank you so much. Appreciate it. you got a whole lot of stuff here that we can't talk about. All the details, they just go to the website. They'll see what's new. That's right. All right. Very well, thank cool. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll be right back with more from Shot Show 2017. Laser sights enhance shooting fundamentals, sight alignment, and trigger control. Training with laser sights increases muzzle awareness, improves and corrects sight alignment at sight picture, and aids in acquiring and maintaining sight picture in low light conditions. Call 800-442-2406 or visit crimsontrace.com for a free copy of our laser training video, The Laser's Edge, and learn why Crimson Trace is making laser sights standard equipment. You got your carry permit, and that's good. But you know you could use more training. Get the DVDs, which have what you need. Springfield Armory presents Concealed Carry 1 and Concealed Carry 2 with Bata Group. Learn specific concealed carry skills from Top Gun fighting trainers. Get trained. Be prepared. This really is life and death. ShopGunTop.com that's ShopGunTalk.com. Hi, this is Tom Gresham from Gun Talk. America is losing critical wildlife habitat at a rate of one football field every hour. It's happening on the Louisiana coast, but it's critical to all sportsmen and conservationists. These precious wetlands provide winter habitat for more than 10 million ducks and geese annually. Waterfowl that migrate north through dozens of states. Don't shrug it off. Get involved. You can help. Visit vanishingparadise.org. The pistol that redefined pocket carry just got even better. The Ruger LCP-2 has improved sights, an easy-to-rack slide, a larger textured grip surface for a secure grip and recoil reduction, and a short, crisp, single-action trigger pull for real-world accuracy. It's so small and light that there's no reason to ever leave home without your LCP-2. A serious pistol in a pint-sized package. Learn more about the LCP-2 at Ruger.com. All right, back with you, Tom Gresham. It's Gun Talk. We're in Shot Show 2017. We're in the Crimson Trace booth. We got like a zillion people everywhere. Uh, you know, the mood is good. We're just we're joined by Matt Buckingham from uh, 
Smith & Wesson, Matt, when I go into your booth, well, first of all, I can't get into your booth. Yeah, uh, right. It's been pretty busy. You yeah. guys are pretty busy. Uh, he would just tell me, what's the number one question you're getting? So um, the number one question, or the, the most interesting thing for us is 2.0, but the number one question I keep getting is, you know, we recently went through this name change for our holding right. corporation, American Outdoor Brands. And there's a lot of people that are very concerned that that's going to be on the guns as opposed to Smith & Wesson. Yeah, they they want Smith & Wesson on their guns. And and I can can tell you that will never happen. You know, um, (laughs) obviously, Smith & Wesson is a brand that... Um, it's known around the world. Oh, and such a such a legacy, and it's always going to be on the guns. For us, uh, nothing has changed. The, for, for the for Smith and Wesson, the company, yeah, you know, all that happened was the company that owned Smith and Wesson just changed its name. But correct. Who cares? Correct. As far as you guys are concerned, yeah, correct. We would never walk away from the Smith and Wesson brand. Right. So, all right. So, but the hot ticket here, and we actually got to shoot this like a couple of months ago. We were shooting video for the M P M two point oh. I always have to get that right. Correct. The M two point oh. Correct. Um, it looks like an M&P, and it is an M&P, but at the same time, it's not exactly an M&P. Yeah, there's a lot of changes yeah. to it. So, you know, uh, 10 years ago, we launched the original M&P, and it really changed the company forever, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Smith & Wesson entered into the polymer pistol space and started to compete with striker-fired polymer pistol handguns. And it's been a huge success for the company. And over the course of that 10 years, we've learned a lot. You know, we've, we've had a lot of suggestions, a lot of ideas for changes, improvements to the platform. So when you look at the new gun, especially if you take it apart, it's very different. For instance, internally, it has a full steel chassis now. Runs all the way out through the rail. So it gives it strength, mm-hmm. gives it rigidity, helps even with felt recoil a little bit sure. when, you're, when sure. you're shooting the gun. Yeah. The trigger, totally different. Oh, the trigger, the trigger's hard to explain. Describe to people. Don't you find trying to describe a trigger pull to somebody is right, hard, right? Know? But it's a, it's a light, crisp trigger. Um, one of the things we always heard was, well, I don't, you don't have a clear, audible reset to the trigger. Ah. Now it does. Okay. Um, uh, about a four and a half pound trigger pull is what we're shooting for with mm-hmm. it, but just a really light, crisp, um, very little take up on it. It's just, it's a great trigger, a, a big improvement over over the right. original trigger. And then you trimmed off a little of the beaver tail. Yeah, so the gun's got a little different look to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so the beaver tail is a little bit shorter, um, gives it a more racy look, uh, a little more compact look. Um, but we did not change the frame dimension, so the gun still fits in all the original holsters. Right. Um, as well as the magazines are fully interchangeable in it. One other change. Uh, M&P always came with three backstrap grip mm-hmm. panels. Now we come with four? Yeah, we added a fourth. So... Um, and again, that's in response to different shooters' size hands, right? So we we received a lot of feedback, and one of them was, "Hey, you know, we could really use this other size." So which did you add? A bigger one or a smaller one? Yeah. So it's for, it's uh, what it's designed to do is help bigger hands. Okay. So what we wanted to try to do was for a bigger hand shooter, and we heard this a lot from our professional customers, okay. to be able to set the hand back a little bit and have a little bit um, uh, better feel for the gun. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Because one of the things I've always loved about the M&P is you put the smallest insert in there, and in my experience, I find that about 80% of the people go, oh, I like the feel of that one. Yeah. Regardless of what their hand size is. That's what i found as well. And, you know, we still have the 18-degree grip angle, so mm-hmm. we still have that, that ergonomic feel that right. really made the M&P it's, so it's popular. It's a great pistol. I mean, I own several. I'm When I sent my wife, my son, my daughter-in-law to... Thunder Ranch, I bought them all M&Ps and said, here, take these. And yeah. that's, that's what we, we did. I mean, that's that's how much I, I like this pistol. Um, calibers? So uh, the initial offering, we have it 9 and 40, with and without a thumb safety. <laughs> and then uh, we also have a 5-inch version that's in flat, dark earth. Yeah. Uh, and it's only available today in the thumb safety version, but we'll have a lot more coming. Is that, uh, what's the thinking behind that? What's the, the use for the 5-inch? So the 5-inch, the you know, is kind of our MHS-like gun. So, you know, we were competing for the MHS contract. Okay. And so we had um, some ideas for a gun like that anyway, right? And right. So, so once um, you start developing it, might as well throw it out exactly. there. Exactly. Yeah. And it's not the exact same gun, but it's, it's pretty cool. Right. Um, and people had a lot of interest in it. And we wanted to have a 5-inch in the offering. Hmm. And then, of course, the grip texture. The one thing that I sh- I'll have to mention, or Jan would get mad at me, is the new grip texture. It's, it's amazing compared to the old texture. We heard a lot that you know, it just wasn't aggressive enough. Mm-hmm. So if you put the new gun in your hand, you definitely can tell. And we came out with that first on the Shield 45. Right. Yes, but. It's one of those yeah, but things. It's aggressive, 
but unlike some guns, it's not going to draw blood. That's exactly right. <laughs> you know, and, and people are laughing. Say, that, no, it actually has happened. I actually, way, way, way back, shot a prototype Smith & Wesson yep. steel gun. <laughs> yep. And the engineers were so proud that they have all the checkering, the stippling, so sharp and tight. Well, after about the second day at gunsight shooting this thing, we're wrapping it in tape. You know, <laughs> right. you're going, oh, man, this right. thing just teared up my hand. Right. So yeah. you can go too far. It is. It's hard to strike the right balance. It really is. Yeah. But, but I know. This, this one's pretty sweet, though. We like it. We think it's the best in the industry. We're really happy with it. It's a, it's a, now, as soon, always, right? As soon as you bring it out, everybody goes, yeah, but what about yep. a compact? What about a yep. 45? What about, you know. What's really exciting about 2.0 in my mind is that it's a platform that we're going to build off of. So you will see a lot of new guns coming out in the 2.0 line. So this is, again, this is 10 years of advancements. Now we have the new version out. And what you'll begin to see is we'll start rolling out the 45, and you'll see different sizes coming out. And you'll see a full family of M&P M2.0 products um, rolling out throughout the course of this year. So has anybody started to call it the Gen 2? (laughs) <laughs> um, you know, we haven't heard that yet. Um, we started calling. I've heard a lot of people call the original now the 1.0. 1.0. So, I like that. We, We're back we will it still up. have the, the original in the line. Oh, really? You're going to keep that in? Yeah. And, you know, we'll let, we'll let the customers choose. But, uh, huh. for instance, on the compact side, you know, because the initial offering of the 2.0 is a little limited, it's just the, mm-hmm. the four and a quarter inch and the five inch sure. guns. Sure. You want to have all the options available in the Correct. originals. Correct. Correct. Okay. And you'll just see over time we'll start to bring in the 2.0s and, and take over some of the original Makes line. sense. I hear you guys are still making revolvers. Yeah, we make a few. <laughs> I tell me if I'm wrong, and I, I it may just be me, ch- you know, channeling what I like. But I think there's at least a slight resurgence in interest in revolvers. Uh, certainly, our sales numbers would say that. Yeah, we've 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 not only um, seen a lot more interest in them, we've uh, increased our capacity so that we can oh. have more availability in revolvers. Uh, J frame still extremely popular for mm-hmm. concealed mm-hmm. carry. Um, you know, just uh, just a very versatile and easy to operate, yeah. you know, gun. Um, it, I mean, it's like you know what you're getting. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it's a, it, this is going to be a gun. It's a point and shoot gun. You pick it up, you pull the trigger. It's right. Double action. Just do what you got to do with it. Right? And a lot of new shooters, you know, coming into the industry. We all talk about that all the time. And, right. And if you're behind a retail counter and you're selling someone, you know, a firearm, it's not really many that are easier than a revolver. It's an option. Right. You know, it's not perfect for everybody and you have to have enough grip strength to shoot it. Right. And, you know, all those other things. But, but you know, but when you start moving up, you've got, you know, the L frame, you've got, you got the N frame, you've got the yeah. X frame. Yeah. Uh, and you guys just keep tweaking, man. You've got seven shot, you know, 357s and eight shot 357s yeah. and the R8 is freaking unbelievable yeah i mean if you get if you have a chance to get to the booth um a lot of new revolvers this year some of some new uh, j frame offerings we came out with the model 66 a new model 66 and 69 nice um we have a three inch uh 500 now <laughs> magnum <laughs> in case you need to set the woods on fire <laughs> yeah so we have i mean we have not slowed down when it comes to new products uh, in all of our categories, whether it's polymer pistol or revolvers. We've got a lot of new stuff at the show this year. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, it sounds like it. So when you look at what I would call like the new Smith & Wesson, where you guys are now, because it feels like a new company right. over the last few years, looking down the road, what is Smith & Wesson doing? What, where are you going with all this? You know, we're just, um, we're really interested in bringing out the best products possible, right? And so when I look at the company, and I've I've been with Smith now for a little bit less than a year, one of the things that I'm the most excited about is our new product development. And again, with 2.0, it's kind of the beginning of some of that. And I think if you, you know, you have the chance to shoot that gun, you're going to love it. You know, it's it's fantastic. But we got a lot of exciting new products coming out. And, of course, we haven't even mentioned, you guys make a lot of rifles. We do. I mean, a lot of rifles. We do. And even in, you know, you look at our Sport 2, which Mm -hmm. is our uh, main MSR offering, uh, we're the market share leader by far. Really? With that rifle. And if you look at some of the other things we're doing, we have a new T model out this year, so it's a little more value add. Mm -hmm. We have the uh, 6.5 Creedmoor from Performance Center on the M&P 10 platform, which is a outstanding rifle. It's yeah. oh, one yeah. of my favorite new guns we brought to the show this year. That's cool. So this is on the uh, the 
AR-15, the 308 size yes. receiver, right. shooting the, the 6.5 Creedmoor, and that's new at the show here? Yeah, it's new at the show, yeah. We have it on display over at the booth. And I it's bet been, the reaction's been really good. Oh, really good, yeah. A very versatile platform, oh, yeah. and you can do so much with it. I mean, you can do everything from long-range target shooting to that would be a fabulous hunting rifle. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then with Performance Center, you get nothing but the best. You know, you get all the options. You get threaded barrels. You get enhanced furniture on it. You get a two-stage trigger. You get a lot of a lot of value for your money there. Yep, yep. And, of course, you know, still got the uh, the rimfire, which yep. is like one of the secret things out there. That you put it in somebody's hand. You know, the MMP 1522, right? Yep. You got that right? That's right. Swear you just... When you shoot it, you go, I must have this gun. And then with the collapsible stock, adjustable stock, yeah. you can start kids off with it. Yep. The problem is a lot of the dads won't actually let the kids shoot it because they're having too much fun shooting. Hey, well, that, that, that's, that's happened to me, yeah. You know, and that's, I think I've said this before. When I got my wife into shooting and my kids, that was what we started with. And that's the nice thing about Smith. We have a 22 offering. We have a full size and a compact 22 for the handgun right, side. Right. And then we also have the 1522. So if you're getting into MSRs or you're interested, the the controls are all the same. Right. You know, so and actually you can it actually will it's the same fire control system. Yeah. It's the same on the fire control as, system as the 223. And you get an opportunity then to, you know, learn with a gun that is much lighter, which for my wife was very important mm-hmm. because she wanted something, you know, the the traditional AR was oh, just yeah. a little heavy for her. Yeah, so, the 22 is really light. Yeah, so really light, um, obviously no recoil, um, just fun to shoot, just a great, great fun yeah. starter. Yeah, exactly right. It's, uh, it's a terrific package. You know, start on the 22, move them up to the center fire and just stay with it. Uh, I know you guys, you know, you got a lot of cool stuff in the booth. By the time people are hearing this, it's all on your website, probably there right now. It's there right now, yeah. Smith-Wesson.com? Correct. Okay, that'll work for you. Check it out, because Smith is not your your daddy's Smith & Wesson anymore. That's right. It really isn't. That's right. And I will just say this, because I know it... Although I would say the quality is still there. Well, no, where I was going to go is, no, the quality is better. Yeah. The quality is better than it was. Yeah. People don't understand that. The CNC machines and all that stuff... They're better than they used to be. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Yeah. Matt, thank you so much. Hey, Tom. Appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah. Absolutely. You guys are just knocking it out of the park. I, I love what you're doing. All right. Don't go far because we are at the SHOT Show 2017 in the Crimson Trace booth. We're bringing you all the new stuff. We'll have more coming up. We got Savage and Loophole. We got Stag. We got Timney. We got everybody here. I'm Tom Gresham. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Gun Talk, broadcasting from the 2017 SHOT Show in the Crimson Trace booth. Now here's Tom. We're having so much fun around here. Tom Gresham here. It's Gun Talk. Uh, you can call us, but no one's going to answer the phone because we actually recorded this at the SHOT Show. You're hearing it a little bit later. So that's just the way it goes sometimes. Bill Dermody has uh, dropped in and joined us here from uh, Savage. Bill, uh, everybody knows Savage, except that people don't know Savage now because you have really shaken up the apple cart at this show, man. We've done something a little out of character for you us. You really have. I mean, everybody says, yeah, I know, I know Savage. They make those really accurate rifles that are good value and nice bolt. You know, what, what's all these semi automatic rifles in your booth, man? We, we rolled out not just one, not two, but six different guns, uh, modern sporting rifles, MSRs. Right. And in yeah. fact... What we're saying is MSR doesn't even stand for MS, Modern Sporting Rifle anymore. It stands for Modern Savage Rifle. Now. <laughs> just claim it, man. Just it's go, ours. We took just it. go with it. Exactly <laughs> right. The obvious question, I'm sure everybody walks up and says, uh, you do know that there are an awful lot of companies making AR-15 MSRs. Why in the world did you guys decide to do this? Yeah, I mean, it, it is a saturated market. But, you know, as we studied the market, we, we saturated with what? Okay. When, when you start talking to somebody about buying an AR... Before they even buy the gun, the conversation starts about what they're going to change on it. And and as we looked at the market, we found that possibly up to 25% of the guns sold are manufactured, are assembled by the consumer. Oh. And and of the remaining guns, I think 75% of those remaining guns are modified within the first 60 days of ownership. That's telling me somebody's missing something here. So what you're saying is they're actually not getting what they actually intended to end up with. Yeah, I I think a lot of manufacturers, a lot of big manufacturers, because I think the small manufacturers really get it right. Right. But a lot of the big manufacturers are mistaking consumer acceptance 
for consumer delight. They're two different things. Okay. They're accepting what you're selling. They're buying it, but are they truly delighted with it? So what's Savage doing? So we're, we're, uh, we're making a gun that has a lot of these upgrades that you will see the consumer do for themselves mm-hmm. um, or that you will see small boutique manufacturers do. So we're not really doing anything that hasn't been done. I mean, in, there's only so many things you can do to an AR, but you're just right. saying, look, you don't have to do it yourself. Here's, here's a package. Exactly. For example, our barrels. We make the barrels ourselves. Okay. Uh, a well-kept secret is we've actually been in the AR barrel business for many years. Oh, you've been OEM them for other people. Yes, yeah, so we've been practicing on yeah. our future okay. competitors, okay. right? Okay, okay. And so we're making a barrel that is, that is 5R rifled. Uh, in the case of our MSR 15 models, it, it's a 223 wild chamber, ah, a target okay. chamber. It's kind of a hybrid chamber, so you right. can five, safely five, shoot. 5.56, yep. yep. And a 5R rifled, melanite treated barrel. So if you want to get a 5R melanite 223 wild barrel online, the mm-hmm. cheapest one you'll find is $180, and it goes up from there. Okay. So, and that $180 barrel or more is, is, is in our lowest price point model. So when you open the box, you got that. Yeah, so okay. from our $750 gun all the way up to our $2,300 gun, they yep. all have that same type That's of barrel. That's quite a, quite a price range. Yeah. yeah. So you're not just delving around into the entry level world. No, we're not. In fact, that's kind of the, the new direction we're taking. Savage to be more performance oriented and uh, and to be more creative. Huh. I think there's there's a lack of creativity in the large manufacturers in our industry, and we're really taking our cues to what the the home builder and the and the small manufacturers are doing themselves. So I know we don't have a lot of time to talk about the whole line of guns, but I'd love to tell you about our flagship. Do it. Okay. So it's called the MSR10 Long Range. Okay. And this is, you know, so in some ways, rolling out this line is a little out of character for us. But in other ways, it's completely within character for us. So we were out shooting at Media Day mm-hmm. on Monday, and every rider who rolled up to that gun was on a steel target at 800 yards with that all day long. Whoa. So in a certain way, this is the savage of MSRs. Okay. That makes sense. Now, is this a 223 platform? or is this No, it's not. It's, it's an AR-10 type AR-10. gun. AR-10. That's what I thought you heard um, said. It's, and, it's, 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 and it's made on a more compact AR-10 platform, okay. so it's not big and bulky and clunky like right. a lot of AR-10s are. I've got a, a good friend of mine, Patrick Kelly, is shooting for us, and he helped us in developing this gun. Right. He says he doesn't like AR-10s, but he loves this one. Interesting. So what we've got is we've, we've got this MSR-10 long range chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. Uh-huh. Um, it's, got, it's got that barrel I told you about. It's got a two-stage adjustable target trigger from Blackhawk. Oh, okay. Uh, it's got um, it's got a custom length gas system on it, so the gas system is actually an inch and a half longer than a standard rifle length gas system. Huh. Um, and we have adjustable gas. It's the softest shooting Ooh. AR-10 you will ever shoot. So good. So all these little creative things, like I said, they're they're and all these little things. Maybe this little shop is doing the custom length gas system. Maybe this little shop is doing adjustable gas, and this other shop's doing six five Creedmoor. We're kind of rolling all those things. And there's some things that those little guys do that we're just not going to be able to do oh, sure. as Makes a large sense. manufacturer. Sure. But I think we found a place where we can slide into the marketplace and do some of those things in a large factory that makes hundreds of thousands of guns and really make some of those custom touches attainable for the average consumer. There's, there's something else here, and you haven't mentioned it. Not, maybe you don't want to, but I will. And that is there are a lot of people who are going to look at this and buy your MSRs because there's such a high trust level with Savage. Oh, I would certainly hope so. I would certainly mm-hmm. hope so. We built a, a fine reputation for accuracy with bolt yeah. action guns. Yeah. So, you know, what, what, and we did a lot of research and we talked to a lot of consumers online and we did a lot of folks and we talked to our people and potential buyers and we wanted this to be consumer oriented. I mean, mm-hmm. from our standpoint, the question, why do you want to get into the market is easy. From the savages' standpoint, money. Sure. Yeah, we want to make yeah, money, right? Yeah, we want to sell guns. But from the consumer standpoint, we talked to a lot of people. We'll say, what does, the, what does the marketplace, what does the consumer need? Why do they need us in the marketplace? What are you going to do that's not already being done? That's, right. that's really the they question. They don't need another M4 clone just with somebody else's name on it, right? right? So right. what can we deliver that the others maybe aren't? And, hmm. it, and it's, a, it's a very accurate, high-performance gun that's within reach. It's the savage of MSRs. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> the modern savage rifle, yeah. by golly. But... We've, uh, we've talked to some very, very high-end users that would be willing to pay way more than what we're charging for their guns huh. that, that are thrilled at, at that gun and, the, and people that want to run that gun. What's the website? Savage.com? Savagearms.com. Savagearms.com. Check it out. They're all on there right now? They're all there. Okay. Bill Dermody, thank you so much, thank my you. friend. Always a pleasure. You take Always. care of yourself. SHOT Show 2017. We've got more coming up. Don't go far.
Are you looking for a place to shoot? The National Shooting Sports Foundation has a great website called wheretoshoot.org. It's the largest database of shooting ranges on the Internet. It's also a great resource for shooters where you can find video tips, printable targets, and a lot more. Find it online at wheretoshoot.org. And while you're there, download their free iPhone app. That's wheretoshoot.org. If you're like me, you don't have money to burn, but you still want to buy guns, ammo, and accessories. That's why we created Gun Delio. That's a free, yes, a free smartphone app. Just download it and start getting the deals. Could be discounts, offers of free magazines for your gun, or you could be the first to hear about new stuff from gun makers. Here's how it works. With Gun Delio on your phone, you get alerts when you enter a gun store. Special deals, you know. You don't have to do a thing. It'll do a lot of other cool things, like let you watch gun videos and listen to Gun Talk podcast. Plus, check it anytime for hundreds of deals and offers. Getting more while spending less. Smart, huh? Gun Delio. Made in America. Gluten-free. At the App Store and Google Play or gundelio.com. In the war on terror, fighting crime in the streets, in competition and homes around the world, one name in firearms stands out. Sig Sauer. Our pistols and rifles are renowned for their unfailing performance. This same commitment to excellence can be found in our line of SIGTAC accessories and the training offered by the SIG Sauer Academy. For unmatched quality, reliability, and innovation when it counts, choose SIG Sauer. Visit SIGSauer.com today. All right, back with you. We are at the SHOT Show. Yeah, in Las Vegas. Yeah, 2017. Yeah, we're in the Crimson Trace booth, and we're having a bunch of fun. But there are other things going on. Uh, actually, due to the fact that we are <laughs> we're having to do this at the show, and then you're hearing it later, We are. this is actually being done on Thursday, the day before the inauguration. And I will just tell you, the sense, as I look around here and talk to people, is that everybody is so upbeat, and it's weird. I was, I was talking to somebody. I said and we were agreeing. I said you know it's not so much that we think that Donald Trump is just going to be absolutely fabulous and wonderful. We do think he's going to be good. Okay, I mean let's be fair about it. But at the same time, um, basically, I think what's going on is that people are just so relieved because. A Hillary Clinton presidency, the absolutely assured, no question it's going to happen, you know, guaranteed presidency of Hillary Clinton was going to be an absolute nightmare for lawful gun owners in America. It was going to be an ongoing, everyday assault on gun rights, everything from Supreme Court selections to executive orders to the actions of the various bureaucracies. And the attacks don't come just from Congress. And that's the thing I I keep trying to explain to people, and I think people are really getting it now, is that the attacks on our rights come from all directions. If you have a a White House that is antithetical, I love the word, uh, to our rights, what you, you end up with is Attacks from State Department, attacks from ATF, attacks through commerce, attacks through EPA to make it harder for people to uh, make ammo or to make guns. You know, it just goes on and on and on. I mean, everything from TSA uh, changing policies that makes it harder to, you know, take guns to go hunting with your guns, to check them on airlines. It just, it can come from so many different directions. And that's gone. And so what I'm seeing is this incredible sense of relief, I think, is what I would have to say this, as people are walking around the show here. Now, I'm looking out, and yes, this is all about product and new stuff and all, but it's also about where we are as a country. It's also about where we are as a people, as lawful, responsible gun owners. And we took back our country. 
We really did. We we pushed back and said, okay, no, 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 no. That's you've gone far enough. Just stop it. Just absolutely freaking stop it. And we had people come out who hadn't voted in many, many years. And so we get what we get, and we're going to see where it goes. Uh, but it's going to be fascinating, I think. Uh, okay. I have a weird sense of humor, all right? I get that. Uh, but I am absolutely having fun watching the media and the Democrats. Oh, but wait, I, I repeat myself. Uh, <laughs> lose their minds as they, first of all, try to do everything they can to harm not just Donald Trump, but to harm the legitimate transfer of power that we've had since the beginning of this country. Every four years, you know, every you know, we have a either a new president or an ongoing president, but we have transferred power so many times. It's always been safe. It's always been lawful. It's always been, you know, actually the envy of the world. And yet we're sitting here and watching the media trying to delegitimize the Trump uh, presidency, as well as the Democrats, of course, trying to slow up, slow down everything. So it's been interesting to watch. And they're just, as they, um, they have a hissy fit. That's a, I guess that's a Southern term, maybe. Where there's, they're having a hissy fit over the whole thing. And part of it is, and you can hear it as they're talking, is it was, this was not supposed to happen. You know, we had already ordained her. She, she had already won. She was running against a clown, as far as they were concerned. Uh, it was just fascinating to watch. And so their behavior right now exposes the lie of the tolerance of the left, of the willingness to be bipartisan of the Democrats. Their behavior tells you who they are. You know, you'll note that eight years ago and four years ago, we did not have protests at the inauguration. You know, conservatives, Republicans may have not liked the fact that Barack Obama was elected, but, you know, he was elected. And so that's what it is. We'll work with that and we'll you know, if he tries stuff, we will try to uh, oppose that the way you're supposed to do. That's the way the system's supposed to work. But you don't block highways. You don't block interstates. You don't organize. You don't go on. I mean, we have videos of them saying, well, we're going to basically use terrorism tactics to break up, you know, the inauguration. Now, by the time you hear this, we will have been way past that. The efforts of the media were not going to stop. They're going to continue to try to delegitimize, to minimize, to um, not just not just Trump, but Trump supporters. And that's kind of the, the whole thing. So toward that end, uh, three days ago, two days ago, uh, I go to the State of the Industry dinner that the National Student Sports Foundation puts on. And we gave uh, awarded the Gritz Gresham Communicator of the Year Award. To Ashley Lebensky, who uh, many of you know, she's been on the show here a number of times. She is the curator of the Cody Firearms Museum. And the idea was this is let's acknowledge and reward outreach. People who are reaching the non-gun owners with a pro-gun solid message. And, of course, she does a great job with that. But right after that award ceremony, the speaker was Mike Rowe. Yeah, dirty jobs guy. Fascinating guy. Fabulous, funny as he can be. But the thing that I got out of Mike is he he's kind of a conservative guy. He knows how to talk to people without being confrontational. He understands that the goal is to be persuasive as opposed to forcing someone to admit that they're wrong and you're right. I fear that it's a lesson that many of us have not quite figured out yet or haven't really fully taken advantage of. And I think we may be... This is a good time for us to kind of redouble our efforts to say, how can we be more persuasive? How can we understand that you can bring people along by asking the right questions as opposed to pounding them with statements? Just kind of a thought for you as you, as you go forward. If you want to be persuasive, ask good questions and bring them to the conclusion. That often works. Hey, don't go far. We're at the SHOT Show. I'm Tom Gresham. Be right back with more Gun Talk.
All right, back with you. Eight, well, I was going to give out the number. You can't call the show. It's recorded. <laughs> <laughs> He's going automatic sometimes. I'm joined right now by Alan Gottlieb from Second Amendment Foundation. Alan was just walking by a little while ago. He comes over and says, hey, we just won a big case. What did we win? What happened? We won a huge, big one. Yeah? Uh, I'll back it up a little bit. Three or four years ago, we won a case in Azell versus Chicago. Right. That knocked out their ban on gun ranges. Even though they said to own a gun in Chicago, you had to have training. They right. wouldn't let you have ranges. We knocked it out in court, so they passed another new law that basically was a de facto ban of gun ranges. You could have them but if you could make, comply with all these regulations, which were impossible. Right. We went to federal court on that one, and the court weaved its way through all the way up to the appeals court level. So we call this one Ezel 2 because it's a continuation of the first case. Right. And the appeals court ruled yesterday in our favor, 3-0, knocking out the Chicago gun range law as being unconstitutional. And uh, big victory, really great. And probably the best part of it is part of the ordinance, right. which they knocked out, said that you couldn't have minors, anybody under the age of 18, on a gun range to shoot a gun. Wait, wait, wait. You couldn't have anybody under 18 on a range? Right. Okay. Okay, and the court basically ruled, sorry, no. Minors have Second Amendment rights, too. Oh, And it's really? not just the federal court that said it. It's the federal court of appeals that said it on a 3-0 unanimous so decision. Minors have gun rights. Minors have Second Amendment rights. Yeah. And so this is really, really, really big. And uh, we're really static about it because now, of course, Chicago is probably going to try and pass a, a, another new law. We may have to have, you know, EZL-3 uh, <laughs> well, filed I against mean, the Basically, city. Chicago does not want to comply with the law, so they keep passing laws that are, you know, noncompliant and unconstitutional. Yeah, you know, and with Rahm Emanuel and the, the yep, Democrats yep, in Chicago, yep. one can continue to expect to see that happen all the time. Mm-hmm. But anyway, Chicago is now in the box that they have... 15 days to decide if they're going to ask the, the uh, you know, appeals court to hear it in bonk. Right. Go for it. Uh, uh, or they have 60 days to, have, to petition for cert to the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, so they're now on a short leash with this, and we're jumping up and down. And the best part about this, Tom, is the lead judge that wrote the opinion mm-hmm. is Judge Diane Sykes, who's on the very, very, very short list by Donald Trump for the next really? Supreme Court appointment. Oh, my. So this has really great <laughs> implications all over the board, and we are really ecstatic, and it's another big Second Amendment Foundation win. And it's one of those deals that people go, hey, you had a win, but they have no idea what went into this. I mean, this is not like we've been working on this for a couple of months. We're working on this for years and years. Well, actually, starting with the Zell 1, which, right. which turned into the Zell 2 lawsuit, we're looking at like a six-year window here. Right. And we're looking, looking at, we've spent like, you know, over a million dollars right. on this. Yeah. And of course, you know, as you remember, when we beat Chicago with uh, McDonald v. Chicago knocking out their gun ban, they had to pay our legal fees right. and gave us a check for just under $400,000. Well, now they're probably going to give us a check for just over a million dollars. Holy cow. So they have to pay the legal fees on this when Yeah, they lose. so we might have to give Rahm Emanuel a certificate of appreciation. <laughs> But the sad thing, I mean, in all honesty, the sad thing about this is in, with all these lawsuits, I mean, you're looking at a million and a half dollars. It right. could have been used for police protection to lower the crime rate in Chicago, to the, lower, the, lower the yeah, homicide Chicago's rate. Chicago's spending that money, you know, and to fight gun ownership, yeah. essentially. Yeah, they could have used that for police, for crime prevention, for, I mean, come on. Chicago needs some help on the, cri- the crime side, right? Yeah, you know, and so this is really sad for the residents of Chicago. I mean, it's right. a great victory, and that way it extends people in Chicago's rights. Right. But on the other hand, you know, it's kind of sad. That it never should have happened. It never should have happened. It, exactly. So I know that you have uh, other, you know, lawsuits going, other court cases going. I mean, you're constantly doing that. So, you know. We just filed on Friday another lawsuit against the city of Seattle under the Public Records Act. For, oh, that's for disclosure. right. Yeah. We had that suit going on with them over their gun and ammo tax. Right. Well, they wouldn't give us the information of how much money they've collected in the tax. Mm-hmm. And so under state law, they have to give it to us. They didn't. So we went to court for summary judgment, which we're waiting for any day now, which will give us the legal fees plus a $100 day fine for upwards of like $30,000, right. which is going to be probably more than they collected on the tax. Holy cow. Well, you can find out all about that at saf.org, Second Amendment Foundation. Alan Gottlieb, thank you so much. My pleasure. Congrats on the win. That is great. Thanks. All right. Don't go far. We'll be right back with more from the Crimson Trace booth at the SHOT Show.